<laughs> a little bit of wetness as we look into this server. As we look towards this second and potentially final map for at least uh, that of Virtus Pro. We're jumping into Mad Lions versus VP. We're doing it on Vertigo with Anders and Moses. Well, we're going to get right into the game, ladies and gentlemen. VP on the CT side, Mad Lions on the T side. So second map, obviously, a very, very close call. I think Mad Lions could have got out of that first map with, you know, just a lot of hype behind them, arms in the air. But now instead, yeah, they almost didn't make it. Yeah, it was more of a sigh of relief when all was yeah. said and done, which uh, which is unfortunate considering how the this, this start that they had. They're going to fake it, aren't they? This is just going to be a fake, I think. Smoke goes down. Shush is kind of over on this side, but the bomb's on the other side. So, yeah, the, here we go. Shooting the Glocks, keeping three people here. Flashbangs to follow it up. A kick it. Oh, he's falling out of the bomb side. This, this fake right now is off the charts. They have actually baited out the entire VP team. They're all out of the bomb side, and now Mad Lions are discovering an <laughs> empty site. They have been completely duped. Oh, my lord. You will not see a fake work that effectively too often. That's brutal. This re this retake save, I guess. Like, you have no chance of getting back into the site. It drains down. Five take, on three. This is so disgusting. Take your hands off the keyboard at that point in time. There's just no point, is there? Okay, good headshot from Jame and a good follow-up as well. But, you know, this, this is so impressive. What a call from Mad Lions. Kicker trying to fight in a one versus two. But that bomb is so far ticked. He does not have a kit picked up at the moment. And that makes it damn near impossible. I you, get, you get faked out that bad and you're just like, oh, I, this one you like as a player, you're just like, oh, I didn't know it was live. Can we just restart this? Can we start over? They... SF3 pistols. They ate that so badly, didn't they? Yeah. They opened that inbox and they saw an email from, from a Nigerian prince saying, <laughs> saying it's, all on, it's all on that B-bomb side. And they're like, yeah, I'll oh. go to the B-bomb side to cash a big check. And <laughs> doesn't work out that way. Yeah, this is this is what's wild, though, is like, I you, I do think it's a, it's obviously a cool call from, from Mad Lines, but I don't think it was necessarily like a, a well executed fake in any way, right? I think it's mental that all five players from Virtus Pro went over to the B bomb site. That final rotation, that's either a miscom or kicker getting nervous. Whatever it was though, that like there's no reason for that fifth player to be there. If four players can't hold against a fake, like five isn't gonna do it. That's that is a fair point, I think. Triple boost to look all the way over. Kick it. How is he not seeing that? He was seeing, I think it's I think it's the automatic movement forward. He had to be looking towards the left so he didn't immediately run off. Yeah, but the, I mean, I get it if he's holding a, a more powerful gun that he would want more players to show up because he could. But how does he do it with the P two fifty? I think it's just because if he looks that far to the right, his the automatic movement forward would push him off the stack. It does. So he, had to, he had to just wait until he until he felt like he had a clear shot. Yeah, that's, I guess that's it. That's uh, it's, that's all I can think of. It's an awkward awkward engagement. The Dren, that's a, that's a beautiful shot onto the head of Roy. Yeah, well done. Jame is already falling back. A Dren as well. Jame looking for the flank, but everyone's forced back. So a second round for Mad Lines is on the cards. There's a nice kill with a MAC-10. And yeah, they dodge the sketchiness. Good. I mean, good stack on the bomb side. They had the right idea. Good boost. Could have absolutely worked out. And now Jame just uh, hoping for an exit. Actually does a lot of damage to Shusho. Could have worked out this time. But yeah, shouldn't be able to find him. He really wanted that last so I think he knew. Second round on the board. Third round coming up. And there is that AWP that Chad was talking about. I'm glad that Chad brought this up. There is a reason why he's uh, you know, probably the best analyst in the world. Um when when this Meta was being sort of when it was brand new on Vertigo and no one knew anything about what to do. Okay. There was a lot of discussion back and forth about how to do this. One of the things I always wanted to see and we didn't really see a lot was that kind of aggressive walking. James was one of the first people to do it and do it successfully. So um, yeah, I'm excited that Chad brought that up because I think that's a that's a really really strong point and it's something that we're definitely going to be watching for. He is over at the A ramp with Kicker, so they got a little bit of a double setup there. And if they turn the corner and look, they're going to see nobody at least for now. And that will, again, that will give them more of a chance to lean people towards mid and B. And we've talked about that B bomb side as being a weakness for a whole bunch of teams on Vertigo specifically. For a whole bunch of reasons as well. Yep. I think one thing I like about Mad Lines on this map that we saw yesterday is their willingness to just attack and take control of mid and utilize that just perfectly. Exactly what they did to start this game. I think four players took control of mid. They've all backed off of it now, changing their point of attack, and they might just walk right into Jame. And he's here alone. And I don't I even mind that. They have a, he's in a position where he should get a kill and be able to fall back. 
Look at Buster playing in front of those smokes. He's seeing that no one is here. They're not going to get faked out again. James shot and fall back, and surely they're going to start to bring people over. Adren and Kicker are the two most likely candidates to try and make a run for it. Look how cautious they're being, though, because mid, because they know yeah. there was presence in middle, and they don't want to get picked off by that, so it's taking some time. Adren now leaking over as well, but James has got to hold on a little bit longer. It's dangerous because they can Molotov this. They can actually burn him out of this position, so he's got to be careful. 30 seconds on the clock, and three people coming in. This is the first chance, and Kicker gets traded, and what an entry into the site here. Adren, I don't know, if they can stop the bomb from going down, that might be a way to win it. 20 seconds left, let's just wait and see. He bounces it in, but Acoy should have it no matter what here. It lands a little bit too far back. I think it's a cool idea, but now they lost, losing all of the rifles, and actually Acoy will take the last one. Shush with a triple, and Mad Lions on three rounds. That's... That's a stumbling start here for Virtus Pro. Yeah, well, it, feel, it felt like that round for me that Virtus Pro, like the players of that that A bomb site, had two different ideas of what they exactly wanted to do. Jame and the the other follow up player behind him at the actual plant boxes were, were being you know pr pretty aggressive. They were trying to keep a hold of this bomb site. There's that kill, and obviously when Jame goes down, Kicker is soon to fall after. There's nowhere else for him to go. But Adred was already far back, waiting for the Molotov to delay the plant. So I think just really there's there just wasn't a whole lot of cohesion on that defense. Two different ideas of how to play the situation. And they both failed. That's a grenade. That's a deagle. That, that grenade did 85 damage. That's an, that's another deagle doing way more damage. Buster with two beautiful shots. And that gives over a creek. I don't know if they can still make it. Oh, yeah, it's another shot there. Taking down Hunden. At least they, can, they have the A-bomb sites. Kind of. Sanji's still here. And again, that grenade immediately put him on 15. And the Molotov, yeah, it'll force him back. He's really got no chance. It would be so cool if Jane was able to clutch this because then VP... I mean, from losing the last round, make up for it a lot. One small detail, Hunden, when he did take that engagement with Jame, he at least dropped the bomb. So Jame never realized that he had the bomb down in this part of the map. If so, in a one versus two, I imagine he likely pushes forward and just controls this bomb. But now, he just has no idea where the attack is going to come from, no idea where Bobski and Eko are heading to. And yeah, that nice little zoom. That was like the jaw zoom. The, yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. Okay. Every time they do that, I think it's great. I think about those. Have you ever seen those like lens shift uh, pictures people take from of cities where it looks like everything is like a little miniature car? Okay. It's one of my favorite things in photography. Um, That's what you think about. Yeah, I know you have a thing with sharks for some reason, but um, sharks are like my bears. Yeah. Yeah. You're scared, but you, you also keep rooting for them in Counter Strike. So what is that? <laughs> I do. It's a weird fascination, James. Ooh. Sharks are like my bears. Jason Mosen. <laughs> but put it on. Can someone make like one of those, you know, inspirational posts? Sure, like we have right. mountains in the background or something, and you just have like, <laughs> you have that. Only if we get the the image of you in a city with two bears, <laughs> two polar bears in the city. It was. It was. Uh, I've. I, I've never been so scared waking up from green. <laughs> horrified. Four to nothing. And all back in the hands of Jame. He has that over towards his side. But oh, shush, right around the corner. Jame needs to get this pick off, but he doesn't want to fight with it. And also, you have a decision. You have a time limit when you're up there because the mid presence can come in any time. That's a nice improvised nade. And shush, this is crazy. Keeping up the aggression. He's got an angle they'll never expect. He's going for three. Jame finally puts him down with the B bomb site. It's just so exposed. And now that there's a smoke wall, nothing Jame can do. Yeah, he's completely blocked off. I mean, he's throwing Molotovs. He actually just picked up that one from shush, but. That's, he just won the round more or less by, by just beating the first smoke running through and then beating the timing on the second one as well. Nice flick, actually. Roy goes down. Jame wants to fight, and the Molotov takes down Hunden. They should not even be in this round, and somehow they are. Bubski and Acorn need to try and salvage this because this was pretty much a one round already by Mad Lions, and somehow VP are back in the mix. Jame with another kill, a beautiful triple kill, and Bubski hiding at the edge of the smoke with fire to his right, and James sneaking in. He gets the one, and they have to come off with one plant. Now the P250's out, but they're not still there, and they turn around for it. I can't believe it. They don't have a kit, though and they're still going to have plenty of time. That is so outrageous. Mad Lions are going to be kicking themselves for losing this round. That's that's just a classic Mad Lions loss. It Every is. advantage in the world. Shush is deep, pressuring towards CT spawn. He's already had two kills. You have a five on three, and you cannot close it out. You have a five on three with control of the bomb site with a smoke wall set up. There's no reason for Roy to be taking that kind of a fight out in the open in that fashion, trying to be clever as the smoke's clear. 
and we've seen it in every game Mad Lions have played, including Overpass in the previous map in this series. Yeah. You just This team gets so many advantages and throws so many away. And like we saw when they were playing against EG, right? There are some teams where if you give those, you will never have those advantages again. You get, you know, you get some of those chances and if you give them back, you know, that's the map more or less gone. So they have to try and iron that out in some fashion. A core expecting a peek over. Not seeing anything just yet. Buster and Sanji playing that B-bomb side early on here. Getting aggressive as well. This is a lot of you. Oh, that is awkward. That's the kind of smoke that you don't want to throw. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> that like extinguished in midair. I actually feel bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any logical sense. Like the fire jumped to extinguish that. Either way. Oh wow! Look at look at how close he is. Bobski in the middle. Uh, this is actually a very powerful position. Yeah, super good lurk as well, and he has a lot of options from this position. All depends on how this hit towards A goes. And actually, I think it looks like Madline's yeah. going to start readjusting. This is a small fake from Kick or from Acor, but Kickert's nearby. He's listening, so he's not hearing anything. So this fake is not going to work. It's not going to pull anyone away, but this utility from Hunden is going to try and help Shush and Roy to get into this bomb site. James, he sees it. He has to fall back just a bit. Oh, and he gets stinked by Shush with that AK. So that'll take him all the way out. Buster and Sanji now going to be smoked off. And last time they were lucky to get a couple of kills through. We'll see if they could do it again. Grenade. Oh, that's a deep one. Dropping Shush. Actually, perfect grenade from Sanji. But again, the bomb goes down and it's four and three. And the money's not really there for VP. Even though they did it last time, they might not want to try and do it again. And now Bubski, that look. I mean, it could have been either one. It could have been trying to stop the retake. This time, it's punishing the retreat in Instead. I mean, those were tri the first kill he got in the sequence of three was someone trying to rotate over to the B bomb site to help out. So his position has just been stellar. He played it to perfection in those mid boxes. And Virtus Pro going to take a really, really hard loss. They have no money. Can I? Yes. <laughs> oh, just give me free license. <laughs> just trying to give you as much rope as possible. <laughs> This is super unfair because I obviously have time to, th to think about this, you know, outside of the pressure of people shooting at me in the game and everything else, but... James, he had two people right behind him, and he went for that fight even after they had spotted him and he had spotted them. I wonder if in a different world, if he actually falls back behind the smoke wall and they just try and boost over it. Yeah. Like, they just stand on top of each other and try and shoot someone getting into I know that's like a... It's so easy to rationalize that when you're not the guy on the front line, but... It's, it's one of the qualities that we kind of like and joke about with James. It's like, I feel like he has two speeds. He has, like, fight and save. Those are, like, his two options going on in his brain. But certainly it felt like he didn't have an advantage at that fight. Like, he lost the angle earlier, but he was really pressing the envelope, trying to create something for his team. Yeah. But he certainly could have fought back, played for a retake, played for a boost. Either way, didn't happen. None of those, none of those happened. Yeah. Found another way that didn't really work out. Uh... Appreciate Kikut trying to go for that fight with the AK-47. It's all they have. If he lands, uh, you know, an instant headshot, suddenly, you know, it gives them a bit of a chance to maybe win at the round. And, um, yeah, you have to do it, right? You have to try. Well, Adrena's going to be all alone. He's got a deagle at that A-bomb site. Madline's taking their time to actually attack this site. You know what? Adren was really good at the end of Overpass. I mean, really good. So... Just get one shot here after Buster's already taken one. If he can get a headshot, this is doable round, but he's going to be Molotov back. That's some good fundamentals for Mad Lions, though, making sure that they're not just walking straight into shots. The flank is being heard. Uh, surely someone will have heard all the stepping going on. Now they definitely know. Acor actually falling a bit low. Kickert will get a kill with the AK, trying to get the spam through. But over at the bomb site, uh, it's not really working out. James is sneaking close with the C set. 75. It would have to be a miracle around the corner, and he's biding his time, just hoping that there's going to be a distraction from the other side. There's Hunden going down. Botsky turns. That's a nice spin and a nice triple once again. That's a close round. It is a pretty close round. That was the first time we've seen Vert uh, Virtus Pro really kind of explore and push across the map. Shush was holding back towards T spawn, holding for a push in middle. He gets eliminated, and then all of a sudden, some of the space uh, gets taken away from Mad Lions. I was very curious. Uh, the, the flank was very fast and aggressive. A lot of footsteps, and the bomb wasn't even planted. They could have maybe slowed that down, but either way, it's, it's one of those rounds where no real wrong answer just because it's such a desperate situation. Yeah, I agree. Six to one in the favor of Mad Lions. I mean, if... if Money's building pretty well also for the Mad Lions. Yeah, they're doing a good job. Bobski's at 13 and two. So 
that's kind of cool to see. It's very cool to see. Shush is at I, eight kills. Yeah, I actually think that's one of the things that, because he's not been doing really terribly in any of the games we've seen Bobski. So, but in in the past when they were on Trick, I think it was a pretty close contest a lot of the time between Acor and Bobski for who was going to be the most exciting player. Um, and I think for a while Bobski actually probably was outshining uh, Acor a little bit. Okay. Overall, so yeah, I it doesn't really surprise me. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I think we could expect more games in the future where Bobski has maybe not. <laughs> this is a little bit crazy, but honestly, um, I think I think everyone on this Mad Lions team is super cool to watch. I yeah, think, I think all four players, and then obviously the the tactical calling of Mad Lions is one of my favorite parts. So even throw Hunden into the mix in that in that sense as well. I think it's just a really fun team. They know he he got spotted jumping. Acor saw Sanji making this cross. I'm almost 100 percent sure. So they try and throw some grenades to force him out back into the crosshair here. I mean, that doesn't really work out. The grenade, I don't know where it actually went. Oh, Buster will shut down Shush, and then Hunden comes up for a peek. They know, and they still went for Oh, my God. Here, <laughs> I thought he was going to miss that. I thought he was going to fall. He does in the end, after getting shot in the face by Adren. Just a core. They surely know he's here. And that's um, that's a pretty aggressive offense from Mad Lions, considering, you know, two players coming through that smoke in the choke point towards the towards the B stairs. Someone trying to come up the ladder when you know they've pushed in. I You're really trying to attack those problems head on. I really don't know why they... I think they could have taken out Sanji. I, I get that one of the... They threw us a Molotov and an HE up there. HE didn't both. make it. Fell back down. Yeah, just... I don't know. I think they... I would have just used more. You know, try and try and see. And the whole utility dump? Yeah, all of them. All the grenades. Nice shot from Acor. Now, kills are kills are big, and Acor can actually save this AWP if he wants to. 30 yeah. seconds to sit in T spawn. And I, I think that's the right call for him to save it and just let Virtus Pro throw bodies at you if they want. Let him go for the hunt. Yeah, you might get you might lose the AWP, but you might take one or two with you and there's not enough money on the C T side to sustain it. Yeah, they can't afford it. I agree. A little bit of pressure being applied with 10 seconds left, and ooh, kick it. I'm wondering if he's going to come through. Flashbang, maybe. He's trying to set it up. Four seconds. If he loses after the time, that's a pretty big deal. The weapon's almost obscuring his field of view. And is he going to go for it at the end? He's right down there. And just stays put. Very anticlimactic. It was. I actually wouldn't even mind it if Kickert was the one to come to that smoke and go for it, because he had saved those we so many of those weapons that he actually he was the only player with money built up behind it. So if you're going to risk someone, it might as well have been Kickert. But what a cool uh, transfer from Buster. That was that looked even better in slow motion for some reason. <laughs> really slow motion accurate. tends to do that with certain things. It does. So I I enjoy slow. You motion take a lot videos. of slow motion videos. I there's a whole thing, just a, a lot of things that are more fun. Utility usage. Slow down any kind of fast pace towards A. Mad Lions haven't done anything super quick aside from the one round of Shush taking the B bomb site all on his own. And that was more decision based off of uh, what he saw than right out of spawn. Mid presence, mid pressure seems to be coming from Hunden and crew. Jame is watching at the off angle, and that is a nice little angle. Wrecked. They did not see that coming. I didn't see that coming. I mean, his face is going to be essentially obscured by the rebar. <laughs> How are you meant to see that coming? That's very cool. All right, Shush. Can you do it again? Waiting for that jiggle peek. Hasn't seen the player on the left. There's two, actually three players at this B bomb site. And the tough part is Mad Lions readjusting across the map. They have to kind of rely on Roy, who's close on A ramp. But this is a long long path to walk where you just have to be silent so you're not giving up the game. Adren hasn't budged, and no one from Virtus Pro has eyes on middle, so when that rotation comes in, Adren's going to have to be careful. Sanji's still looking behind him. There is an element of danger here. The problem is there's no smokes. Yep. There's a Molotov, two flashes, and an HE grenade to make this hit work. It's got to be just one battles, and Bubski now has the information of where one player is. Just going down. Pretty good defense early on here. Kick it with a little bit of a wild spray, but it does put Bobski very low on health, and that's the rest of the grenades for Mad Lions. A Molotov on top of the bomb plant. They have to clear it out. This is they can't really go through with that. Good headshot from Hunden and almost backing into the fire. Want to be really careful about that. Two versus three with 11 seconds left, and Bobski holding it with the AWP. The bomb goes down, and Hunden, he'd already served his role. Now Bobski. I don't think there's anything that you can do. If you could even get out with the orb, that would be huge because you're not going to stop the defuse here. Yeah, make a run for it. That is by far and away the better choice. 
Good retake from Virtus Pro. I was, I, you, they clearly, clearly wanted to fight for the for the retake rather than try and stop the the actual uh, incoming attack. That one looked much better. Everyone on that yeah. defense was a bit more passive. They had the Molotovs to stop and delay the plan. Adren through that one perfectly. So yeah, very good call from Virtus Pro. It's now two in a row on their side, and the last buy coming in for Mad Lines. They invest everything they have left into this. The AWP that was saved. Passed over to Acor and rifles on the other four players. Yeah, still fighting for it all, and then in really rarely you had a run goes to make the jump over and the spray is successful in the end. That works out. It's actually Shush coming in from the regular side, but and he's still charging at it. Listen, we've seen him lose this round before. Hold your breath. They need to they need to really think about this VP. If the bomb goes down quick and they can't make it through, it's not gonna be worth it. Now I'm so far away. They are so far away, yeah. There's plenty of time. There's actually danger on that boost, and now they can try to at least retake this part of the map. It's working. Adren's got the first and the second, and Mad Lines, they might lose their grip on this beat bomb site. Acor watching from behind. It's all down to timing, though. Jane has just spotted two. Jane knows exactly where they are. Missed shot. And then low on health. Look at Adren, eight, and just a little bit of half health. This is so risky. They're still hovering around here, VP, though. They could risk it up, and they can maybe rebuy in the next round if they lose this, but it's tricky. And now Popsky's coming in with the flank, and that bomb has been down, a shot through the smoke line. Acorn oh. does it again, taking down Jame, and that leaves Adren. He can't escape, he can't do anything. It almost connects. Popsky will drop him in the end, and that's seven to three. Man, some close rounds. I, I thought they were going to lose that again. Yeah, th that couldn't have happened. That would have been an absolute disaster. Just the fact that Adren gets both of those kills is, is just makes you real nervous. 14 and 3 on Bobski. Flanking them once again, but they can buy on the VP side. Still, this is a tremendous first half, at least for now, from Mad Lion's point of view. They, this is how they started. Remember on overpass, though they had that ten to five lead. They had a very good first half, and it, it just sort of slipped away from them at the end. Two very nice kills for Dren, and that was that was the retake that was on. And actually, it's Acor who saves the day. These two shots. He just has the lineup. He just pre-fires it, and he gets both. But God, does it make you nervous when they take that? Like, how have they had such good success getting into that bomb site and such a tough time holding it afterwards? That's one of those sites that hard, that's hard to retake. Yeah, it could definitely be very hard to retake. And it's not even just that they get into it, right? They get into it and they get so far up that you would <laughs> think that they would, you know... Maybe just don't go that far up. Maybe if you just forget yeah. about that part. Keep it cool for a minute. Trade, two for one, kick it. And jam all the way on the middle side. Oh, that's the bomb drop there. They need to find a way to get back and pick up the bomb. It's two on four anyway, so maybe they just spend some time here actually looking for the kills, regardless of what happens on the rest of it. What a strange round. Roy gets caught, and Hunden now one versus four. That was aggression in the middle from VP, and it absolutely shut down the Danes. Hunden would have liked one more, but not going to happen. And that's four players surviving for VP, so money still sits very nice on the other side of the table. Madeline's going to have to be relegated to pistols, probably mostly Glocks, all things considered. Okay, so this this all of a sudden right here, if Virtus Pro can, can convert this round, they can turn this into a very nice half. They still have a chance, obviously, to win things. Five, uh, four rounds left. They actually force. They force. Shush could buy Galil and this. That's it. That Galil will do it for us. Yeah, Acor saves. Uh, he's got just the one flashbang in the Glock for the AWP, but this is, this is interesting. I did not expect Madeline's to force up here. Me neither. Sanju playing quite far forward in middle to, to spot that corner. And it looks like we're going to be going for the A bomb side. With the utility, you almost have to assume it'll be very, very fast here. I mean, they actually, I'm even surprised they even flash anything. Why not just make it a contact play? Go as far as you can until you, you hit someone and then fight. I think the, the more interesting thing is the fact they only have one smoke for this hit. That's it. That one right there. Everything else is flashbangs. It's and not a full set piece. They almost should know that this plant is going to be Molotov. It's been almost every time. Oh, that lands inside of the smoke. Molotov is extinguished. A little bit of a tricky situation now. Bomb is definitely going to be going down. Five on five. They don't have the weapons, but Virtus Pro, one mistake here. It's all on Shush. It's all on Shush. He's watching the flank at the moment, but he's going to have to help out with this Galil. They're going to need it. Yeah, they definitely will, because there's going to be smokes everywhere, right? So the pistols won't be able to just power through that smoke. Hiding on the site, that's a little bit of a trick. He was hoping, I think, for a smoke to land on top of him, and that never came through. Now they've got it smoked, and they're already kind of oh, going for it, coming back off instead of defuse, and now Hunden. Yeah, they just hold their own. 
Virtus Pro, not even pressured. I think they, they decided we're going to go for the fights before we try the defuse, and that was a smart choice. Yeah, I very aggressive on that retake. If they would have smoked that while Shush was still inside of it, or Acor, or well, Roy, I guess, Roy, yeah. What, the bomb spot? Yeah. If they would have smoked on top of it and go, hey, that could have been very fun. Well, that might have been what he was hoping for. I think that's exactly into the what ground. He, he was like, just throw one more smoke on the bomb for the defuse so I can just be right here with my knife out. Yeah, not enough production. I think, uh, too, uh, a lot of flashbangs picked up by Mad Lines in that round. None of them saved for the post plant. You, there is a world where you could just bomb some flashbangs over while the retake is happening and all that exposed skyline. Fortunately, he used it all to get there. And now, I mean, I don't know how you feel. I don't know if I think that, I don't think that was worth the investment that Mad Lines had in that round. A plant and one kill. Mm, no, probably not. Like, I tend to agree. I guess the bomb plant at least means, you know, they could buy this next one. So it's like, it, they maybe would have had a strange buy in this round, if, even if they yeah. hadn't gone for it. So it's not terrible. But Virtus Pro is closing the gap now. I actually think it's the one kill that makes that the, the real problem, right? Because if they've got like three or four kills, then they could have put so much pressure on the VP economy, but the fact that they get away with four rifles means they're feeling all right. That was very clean. Nice shooting from a Dren. Six to seven, just one round back. This is a three round run for Virtus Pro, and five of the last six have gone in their favor as well. Kind of, kind of a similar situation as to the one that we had on Overpass, right? It's a slow start, but then they fight their way back in. They start to get some rounds on the board. It's looking even better for them in the first half here than in the first half of that map. But let's see. Can they continue? They could actually turn this into a very good first. I think six is already actually quite decent for CT side over um, Vertigo. So well, and also, I mean, always in the context is, as well as how poorly the, poor the start was. Oh, Sanji's been spotted. He's taken down solo. A G grenade popping up, and it's down to eight HP. That's going to be frustrating for Hunden. I think he's also being held by Bobski on the other side. Well, he can smoke it off, right? But the problem is, yeah, that that'll that'll cost him at least a grenade, and it could cost him way more. I think he's just going to gamble that they think he, he evacuated, that he left. Remember earlier when they knew Sanji was here, they went right up the ladder and challenged him. Now he's getting away once the spam stops. He's eating a lot of time off the clock and a lot of utility yeah. off of some of these Mad Lions players. So that's, he's lost a lot of HP for it, but it's not, not a bad outcome at all. Shoulder peak, but Adren just continues to hold Mouse while a little bit of a strafe to take down Shush. Four versus five. And even with the damage that's on the VP side there, it is still pretty interesting. Now they're going back to the A bomb site. And there is still Jamin Kicker here. We'll see if they could do it, Mad Lions. We haven't seen Mad Lions really trying to exploit mid a whole lot. They, they started to kind of go that route in the early stages of this half, but they haven't kept up with it. Jame, completely blinded, but he's going to stick around for the fight, surely. Kicker's here with him. Hunden turns the corner. That's the bomb. Hunden's the only one heading in. No one else is even prepared to take advantage of that kind of a play. 30 seconds, and Acor better go on a tear. 22 seconds now, and Acor is the only one left. No chance of picking up the bomb, but he can take some weapons away. Heading into the last round, not a huge deal. Plenty of economy on the Virtus Pro side, and he needs to just save this up. Yeah, that is, that is definitely it. I don't know. They were set up for it, but it didn't really look like... They really follow through. Uh, that's a strange round from from Mad Lions. Some good kills, some good stoppage, I think, out of out of VP. So credit to them for uh, for you know not letting them progress too far into it. You are right though. In the beginning, they had Bubsky uh, at least a couple of rounds lurking around in middle and sort yeah. of, you know actually getting a lot out of it. And we even saw like, a couple times like two or three players from Mad Lions actually took control and then just backed away. But that none of that's happening at this point. Part of that, I think, the presence of Sanji certainly last round kind of you know shied them away from that idea. Yeah. Yeah, which is, it's interesting because all he did, right, was get shut down to eight health and then just didn't die. And they had, you, they had to figure out, do we want to commit to spending time looking for him or, you know, what's going on on this side now? 15th round is coming up and VP building another comeback right now. Adren at 13 kills. He was, if not top of the scoreboard, at least close to top of the scoreboard on overpass overall yeah. after having a, an absolutely dreadful start. So Dreadful start. He's doing a fine job. Well, so you go to the other side, the guys who had the good uh, the good maps on overpass for Mad Lines, Shush and Roy. 
having yeah. a, having a not 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 as much of a fun time here, especially Roy down at three kills at the moment. Yeah, not the same impact. Here we go back to mid. Here's that mid presence we wanted. Oh, maybe it was this boost that scared him away from it as well. But certainly they have the information. And look how fast paced this is. Hunden's gonna wrap around through CT spawn. Watches to catch him off guard. There's one player. Ooh, risky jump, and he can't win the fight. But Buster can't convert after that. Ooh. And what a stunning turn of events for Roy. He actually kept running with the Mac 10 and hit the headshot somehow. Three on three. They've not had a lot of lu luck in the afterplan for this particular bomb site. The grenade will immediately take down Roy. There's Acor, though, finding a chance. He's at the edge. Surely he's thinking about the jump at this point in time. One versus two. He sees just a shadow, but they could come in from the other side as well. He doesn't go for the shot, and now, yeah, he has to back out just a little bit. The smoke is fading anyway. He has to do this clean, or it's not going to happen at all. The Molotov to try and force him away. Ooh. He goes for the no-scope. Oh, it almost has it. It's not quite going to be there. And Jane with the kit will be able to win the round. Eight to seven in favor of VP at the end. A really, really fine comeback for them. Yeah, it's not just the scoreline, but it's the five-round run to close it out. It's seven of the last eight to close it out. That is a comeback and a half from Virtus Pro in the opening segments here on Vertigo. Heading into halftime, we'll see if they can close it out when we return. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second map, second half, Virtus Pro and Mad Lions here. Third day of Intel Extreme Masters in Katowice. And I know Virtus Pro are building a reputation for comebacks, at least in this series. I honestly thought they were going to get swept. It looked like Mad Lions were fully in control, and then they just weren't. Yeah, I don't even know if it's necessarily Virtus Pro. But like, it's more Mad Lions just seem to be dropping the ball. Like, I mean, we see it sometimes in young teams as well who are trying, climbing the rankings. Like, it takes a bit to learn how to actually close out and win games properly. Yeah, I, but I, Mad Lions is a great job of finding advantages tactically. I think they're an incredible team. It's just for, for whatever reason they just lose so many advantageous situations. 
dropped the ball on that 51st floor, Jason. It's a long way it's down. It's a long drop. Got to be careful about that. We have, I think, an early attempt to go. Oh, that's a dink on Shush. He won't be happy about that. He's playing it alone. They have two smokes and a Molotov. And I don't think they've actually made up their minds about what they want to do yet. They had like a little bit of an early push towards their B stairs just to look for a fight. And Jane goes down to Bubsky. He had a, a really fiery start to that first half. And then he kind of cooled off because the whole team did, I guess. Yeah. But if he can rediscover that here at the early stages of the second half, that would be big news. Well, it's big news that he's rotating towards the B bomb site because shush, it's hard enough to do this alone, much less with, alone with 19 HP. You're going to need a teammate there with you, especially now that you can see on the minimap, Virtus Pro readjusting towards this side of the map. They're going to come up these stairs very, very soon. Hunden even backing away on the ace bomb site. So is Acor. Everyone's getting prepared for this hit. Yeah, he's going to get smoked off, shush, but it's the USP, I guess. Oh, he actually did. Goes on the other side. Molotov's deep, not catching anyone. So he's going to have a couple of chances here. The flashbang will force him back, but yeah, just one click and he will have done his job at this point in time. On the other side, bomb still. Oh, there we go. Finally going down. It maybe took a second too long. Bubski hoping for it. Do they want to challenge VP? They're all there. It could be a three-man peak. There's Sanji leading the charge. And a little bit of a return. Acorn, Bubski before he finally gets dropped. It's Buster alone in a one versus two. Oh, instant headshot. Can he go for the quad kill? He's nearly got it. Close range, and there it is. Taking him down, and VP now in a good lead. Yeah, that is such a good round on the pistol. As soon as the engagement was made, everyone from Virtus Pro fighting with those Glocks, pushing forward towards the E-boxes. That is well done towards the generators, I should say. And they take a pistol. And that's that's this is a huge run for them now. What a round from Buster. All based off, I think he even got the Gush earlier onto... Uh, oh, did he set it all up onto yeah. Gush? I think that was the first one, and you could see as soon as the smokes and the flashbangs come in, shush, they just have to play it so passively. He doesn't have the HP for any of those engagements. Really, really tough scenario for him to be in. Nine to seven. Oh, this is awkward. And going back to the first half, that's now six rounds in a row. They made that jump sound twice, and you can actually see that Sanji on the other side is already looking for it. He already knows uh, there's no way this is going to catch them off guard. I would almost say once you make that jump sound, might as well just kind of back it on out. You say it's a 0% chance this catches him off guard? I think it's going to catch him off guard. No, they, they threw him off literally in their, in their faces, Jason. They knew. Foiled again. <laughs> Flashbangs, utility, nades, everything. Once they start throwing bottles at you, it's a pretty strong message you need to leave. <laughs> have you have you encountered that many times in your life? <laughs> there's, there's maybe been some moments. Didn't feel welcome afterwards. <laughs> I think it could be worse. I, it could always be a Snickers bar while you're casting. <laughs> I think they said you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah. It's um, a bomb plant and a wall bang. Some sort of haiku that we're building here. I don't know what's going on. Shush. And then and, and Bumpski with the scout. Yeah, just backing away. Already a bit of a hunt going on with Sanji towards the B bomb site. I don't think he'll commit anywhere. Still pretty far away. So, a 10th round for Virtus Pro. They take a three round lead. Yeah, which is... I think it's like the first lead they've had in this, this series. It is. I don't think they led ever on overpass. No, they were... I mean, they equalized 14-14, I think, and then they couldn't They couldn't make it through. I'm super impressed by VP. I'm pleasantly surprised. I picked Mad Lions, and you, I think a lot of people picked Mad Lions to win this. Well, remember, the desk outlined it perfectly, what kind of a win this would be for Virtus Pro. They haven't beat anyone in a series... Oh yeah, that's since, right. Since like I don't I don't remember was that September of last year, except for Heroic. Heroic's the only team they've been able to beat in the series since then. Taking maps. Oh Bubsky. Scout versus the whole team. He's down to two health. It's looking grim. These uh Madline solo players are not having a good time. Neither neither do they at overpass. It's Shush as well. So really tough time. Sanji Smoke goes down, pulls out a nade, but he's got Jame to back him up. Here's the MAC-10 going to work on our opponents and even disappearing into the smoke during the reload. Another round for Virtus Pro in the back, 11 to 7. Cool movement from Jame, that round. Just, yeah, didn't have more bullets, just decided to, to escape in a puff of smoke. 11 to 7. And Adren still top of the board with 15. Jame right behind here. Well, actually, it's uh, Buster and Kicker at 14 both. What a what an sort of what a nice even performance right now from the entire VP side. 
And we'll see what Mad Lions can do. We talked about Jameis, an aggressive over on the CT side. Hard to imagine Acor won't be trying to follow that. He's just, he's immediately dead. Stepping it up. Yeah, already trying to set the tone in the first round that he has the op, and he might just do it. He's so close, and he's got it. Kicker goes down. Shame has an ADP over here, and now Buster slides into position. He wants to challenge, and if they did their research, they'll realize frequently Shush is all alone here, as we mentioned a couple of times, and I think Buster hasn't beat. I think Buster just walks up, and Shush missed the timing, and that's one of the real crappy things about being a B player on this map. Although that, that hurts, the dink. That means he can't really call his teammates over, although oh, 100 gets confused. A second player far back messed with his aim at the most inopportune moment. Yeah, that would actually be worth having a slow-mo replay because you're exactly right. The sec otherwise, he has that kill 100% of the time. Now they have to save instead. That... Yeah, that's that's really rough. You see that second player just drag his crosshair a yep. little bit to the right, and that is unfortunate stuff. 12 rounds now for Virtus Pro. That's whenever I, I see a new player that I've never heard of, whenever you know you hear hear about someone that's making their way up the ranks and people saying they might be really good, whenever I get a chance to watch them play, that is actually one of my just eye tests for how how you know how much I think of them. And the reason why I think it, it makes sense is because I actually I'm not sure that's something you can train. I think your just you know, <laughs> whatever it is, your neuronal wiring will either make you temp tempted to try and, you know, and get more than you could, or like it'll it'll defocus you for a second, or it won't. And there are some players that are very, very good at committing to whatever whatever the first task at hand is before they then, you know, do something Move on else. to the next one, yeah. And yeah, I, I wouldn't even know how to start to think about practicing or training people to not do that. Um, I myself am very much a victim to, you know, doing that swap, you know, way too early and you leave some guy on 18 health and then... You, you wouldn't pass your own eye test? <laughs> not at all. Do as I say, not as I do? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, that's just unfortunate. I don't know if they would have, it's not 100% they would have won the round because Hunan could have got the kill and still been traded and it might, yeah. have, it might, it's not that it's, you know, the entire round is on him, but unfortunate. I think the real, I mean, the, the, uh, this is the kill for me that is just like, look at how difficult it can be as that solo B defender. That's so brutal. That wasn't even necessarily any mistake. That was just unfortunate timing of when you were transitioning into a new position. And there's not a whole lot of players. It's not going to happen too frequently that someone just kind of walks up the stairs in that fashion. Bit of a missed Molotov over at the B side. Let's look at the kill. Roy goes down afterwards. That was with the A ramp, so nothing to do with the Molotov, really. Shush is pushing forward, and that allows Bobski to rotate all the way over to try and help out here. Four on four, and VP are not going quick enough to exploit the fact that there was only one person at A. Now there's going to be a second player who then can rotate in, and Shush, yeah, again, he's really far up on that side. All right, chance for Acor, waiting for any indication, any sign. Now we see this frequently flashbanged, multiple flashbangs, multiple Molotovs to force a player in this position back. You yeah. can even spam him as he tries to retreat. So how does Acor handle it? And meanwhile, much like Overpass, all four players for Virtus Pro are here, so there's no point in going to the other side of the map. You don't have control, you don't have information. It would take a lot of time and a lot of resources to readjust in that fashion. Fully agreed. Makes sense, just keep going. Double grenade to try and instantly bomb someone out. Acor, oh, he actually pushes through the smoke again. He is just that kind of a player, but it backfires this time. 40 seconds on the clock, and they're going to be pushing against Bubsky and Hunden, and Bubsky's already gone. Hunden, one versus four, trying to run onto the side. He's going to get the one, but Jane will be there to immediately get the revenge. And no point, I think. I mean, Shush is flanking them from the lower part of the map, but I don't think it's worth it, yeah. No, it's really not. That's brutal. Even with the teammate putting out the Molotov for Acor, the smoke is what screws him up. Smoke just plumes right into his vision. Mad Lions having a, a really awful time. This has turned so quickly and so heavily. Like at one point, this was six to one, <laughs> and since since then, I mean, what seven seven to one run for Virtus Pro, or I mean, excuse me, more than that, eleven to one. Yeah, when you put it like that, Jason, a powerful point. I, I can't argue against it. They won the last five rounds of the first half. They're about to start out winning the first five rounds of this half. That's uh, yeah, it's getting wild. The party is officially over for Mad Lions on, on this particular map. Still have a chance, obviously, to turn it around, but it's looking so good for VP. It's their map pick as well. It is. No, it's not. It's versus pros. Oh, I thought that's what you meant. Sorry. Um, yeah, the final yeah that's one, definitely what I meant. Yeah, of course. Uh, final one's going to be Dust 2, right? 
I want to say. Yes, it will be. See, I know what I'm doing. Kind of. Some of the time. 13 to 7. Virtus Pro looking to close this out. Just ride this momentum into the sunset. Remember, this is an elimination game as well, and Mad Lions is a lot of people's, mine included, Dark Horse, to have a, some, to have a decent result at this event, to, to cause at least some upsets and some issues. They might just get wiped out here by Virtus Pro. Certainly, Vertigo looking to go that way. There'd have to be a third map afterwards. But they need to get back into fighting shape. Yeah, they do. Pretty good grenade to equalize that. The MP9 was close there for Roy, but he just apparently couldn't find the... Uh, the right angle for it. Bobski playing close, but again, he's going to get grenaded out of that position. Hunden getting a kill. He wants to turn for it. He wants to go aggressive. I don't really blame him. I don't think it would have made sense to stick around, but that makes it a two on three. And they have some grenades. No molots or no smokes to try and stop that. But again, it lands inside of just the last bit of that smoke. That is unbelievably close. Could have maybe been something if they could have maybe stopped the defuse or stopped the plant there. I think they have to go for this. I think I think that it's just the score is too far wide. You have to start fighting for some of these rounds. Good flashbang. Perfect flashbang. Jame goes down. Sure, she's got a smoke, but I think he wants to take the fight against the Dren. He's already seen the shoulder, and he goes for the wide swing. Now it's Buster, who's been very, very good. Smokes up again. That's two of them now blocking Buster. He just tries to shoot through. Oh. Headshot oh. alone, and he'll save the round. Another one in the bag for Virtus Pro as they go all the way up to 14. Just double tap pre-firing, just waiting for that follow-up peak from the Alper. That's so brutal. Acor just steps right into it. And th th what really sucks about that for Mad Lines, that was such a good retake. They played everything perfect. Shush did yeah. a great job utilizing the flashbang from Acor, the push on towards the, the side hallway, this one here. That's, uh, that's really, really difficult to handle. So 14 to seven now. Nice job from Buster, 19 kills. Yeah. That was yeah, that was incredibly well played by him. Not the first time at all we've seen that on this particular map. I think we just saw the rare uh accidental scroll wheel jump from Adren after he'd already got the kill. Usually it works out the other way, doesn't it? But this time it was of no significance. It's probably wiping sweat off his brow. It's like, oh thank god. <laughs> Woo. All right, Buster. Might have a chance if Hunden overexposes. And now look, Shush has had a, not a lot of fun playing this map or this bomb site solo. That Bubski is there committed right off the bat. Yeah, and over at the A ramp, they, just, they don't have the weapons to go down. I mean, they're doing it anyway, but it's probably going to be an impossible fight. Some damage, then the follow up Acor actually the one to get the kill. Surprised they got even that much done. Oh my god, three Molotovs, two nades. Everyone got the hell out of there. Just throwing it all at the wall. It's like a banana bomb. Oh, that's a reference. That's a reference and a half. Here we go. Buster challenging again towards the B bomb site all on his own. And I, I wonder, he has the opportunity to call his team back if he wants, because he's got a pretty good foothold onto the bomb site. He's going to turn the corner against Shush. That would be a big fight to win. Okay, now Virtus Pro, this is all you have left. You have no other options except the A bomb site. And they're low on health. I mean, it, it so are Mad Lions, in fact. It's not this could go either way. Even in a four and three, there's the weapons, there's the health that's left. The bomb is planted. Not quick enough, Acor, or not accurate enough, to be fair. Roy does a fair bit, but he's not going to get the kill. Jame and a Dren, very, very low indeed. And now another after plant. Sanji will take down Roy and Bobski, both that leave Shush in a one versus three. And now it's definitely no longer worth it. VP come through with another round, putting themselves at 15. Roy's got to be so frustrated. If he has anything but an SMG there, I think he gets that kill onto a Dren. And then yeah, it does. changes the nature of the game. But that weapon at that long range is not effective enough. Virtus Pro is just, man, they've just been marching into any bombs that they wanted. This this Mad Lines defense has, has not even done anything. They haven't won a single round in this second half. It's, it's ugly. It's answering that age-old question of who would win, lions or bears. Uh, yeah, is that? I I I feel you gave it. Have to give it a guess. I mean, outside of what's happening here, what would you pick? Oh, I would I I would pick bears. I would. I don't feel good picking bears. I'm more of a lion fan. I myself. guess bears is a is a large category. You know, I may mean, have to specify it a bit, but. Yeah, well, certainly there's Best always. bear. Whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Number one bear. What most well trained. <laughs> Bumski going down, trying uh, to take that fight against Adren. A lot of spam coming through. Kicker is nearly dead. The grenade, it's not going to catch him. And another 
you know, rough start for Mad Lions. Trying to see, they need an eight round comeback to get overtime. It just doesn't seem doable. Let's not Actually, even talk about the eight rounds. Let's start with one. Just one? Just win one round on your CT side, and then we can start having the discussion of what comes next. Okay. Captain Realism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a terrible superhero. Buster again. <laughs> Le least loved out of all of them. <laughs> no merchandise being sold. Hunden goes down, Buster again. And he knows, he's going to know Shush is the one who normally plays this B yep. bomb site, so he's going to know it's not clear. Shoulder. Peace. Trying to shoulder peek him. <laughs> Caught it, that bullet with his face instead. Three on three, no utility really on Mad Lions. Plenty of it on VP. That could absolutely make the difference. We've seen that on the B bomb side a number of times. Shush, does he want to fall back behind the smokes or does he want to try and challenge it? So now he's sort of thinking about it. Just don't fall off the building. Whatever happens, that's the last thing you want to try and do. Well, that Molotov doesn't do anything right at the edge and he's going to have to fall back. See if they go for the bomb part. Sanji already on it. And again, Mad Lions can't stop it. They're right there on the lip of it. They, they're sort of in position, but they can't do anything about it. Sanji will get a kill and a lot of damage in return, but I'm not sure it's going to matter anymore. Jame has got the one angle covered with the Krieg, and Roy trying to oh. switch in. Nice headshot from Jame, and this might just be it. Aiko with the scout. He's going to swap it out, but again, they're everywhere on this bomb side. How is he going to try and find them? VP, after losing map number one, will come back in a stunning fashion. 16 to 7 as they take down Mad Lions on the second map, bringing us to the third. What a big success. Yeah, I actually am so surprised, so shocked that that just happened. Mad Lions 